Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. I won't be on here forever, but I definitely uh, do have something that I need to share. Amen. And I know many people are not woke right now, so they're going to have to do a replay. <laughs> Good morning, Kelly. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, my, my, my. Okay. I know it's early, but um, needless to say, <laughs> there's, wow, 3.30 in Los Angeles. Wow. Well, I said I'd be coming back on here to share just a portion of what God uh, has done. Um, I'm telling you, ever since last night, uh, I don't know, this has been, oh, praise him. There's been a fire uh, lit in my my belly, in my stomach. And um, I just could not resist to testify and after doing some more research, <laughs> I really, really, really uh, had to testify about this. Um, but uh, I'm just going to talk to my followers that are asleep. <laughs> I'm talking to the ones that are alive. But um, I'm definitely talking to the ones that are asleep. Um, they'll see this and this will bless you. But um, I do want to make those available or make it the announcement that um, many have reached out to me. Yeah, they'll see it. Um, but I have very, very exciting news. I am yet and still writing in this dictionary. Um, even as far as last night, the Lord was ministering to me on... Um, uh, category colors or categoric colors, uh, if you will. Um, and that's not that deep, but there is such a thing as. Y'all, it's early for me too. There is such a thing as warfare colors, um, prophetic colors, uh, evangelistic colors, colors of joy. Uh, colors of exaltation, uh, colors of worship. There are different colors that come into play when people talk about certain things. Um, so we can't just lock them all up. In, and I'm, I love what God is doing with this supernatural dictionary because everyone is so crazy about the prophetic and the prophetic is kind of on a high right now. And even while I say that this is definitely the year of the prophet, but I must say that um, people are so crazy about prophecy that we forget that there are other facets of God that are very, 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 very important or different ingredients that make up uh, in different elements in the equation. Uh, or factors in the divine equation of God that even make up the prophetic. Um, I really believe, I don't know why I'm going this way, but I'm going to make mention of this and hurry up. I believe every prophet should function in deliverance. I believe every prophet should function in healing. I believe every prophet should function in some level of an apostolic grace. And what do I mean by that? The ability to scent uh, a people into destiny. You have to have the ability in your mouth to apostolos people, to send them into destiny, uh, to send them into their place of not a destination, but destiny where you're operating in what God has called you to 
or the different sphere that God has called you to is a specific place in your time that's going to make the most impact. Woo, I'm yelling all over the place. But let me get to the good news. The good news is, uh, to all my followers, and you can always hit up, um, I don't know, I forgot her name on here. Um, Kelly might be able to help me out a little bit <laughs> if she's still there. But um, I know Alonda. Um, I always call him Alonda out. But Alonda and Caleb Dexter and Dominion Small. Um, Alonda Sims, Caleb Dexter, and Dominion Small uh, will be able to help uh, everyone else with this. And in a minute, Roshania and uh, Brittany will be able to help as well. Um, because I've shared a little bit about this. Um, but I had everyone to repeat those words, A R N on last night for a specific purpose um, because that is the name that the Lord has given me of the network um, that God is putting together uh, for those that need covering for those that need uh, I guess that network aspect in the spirit amongst people that are not ashamed people that are not competing people that are not in it for the rat race they really want to do ministry the right way they really want to please god the right way they want to function the right way and um, this network is going to provide that but the network is a sharp uh, clarion call a a sharp clarion call um and I had my book in front of me to really tell you exactly uh, what was written down. But I I'm saying it once for the first time here. I'll be repeating it sometime in the future. I don't know how soon. But Apostolic Renaissance Network. Apostolic Renaissance Network. Comes out of Joshua 6 and 5. An Apostolic Renaissance Network is a call for unity, a call for acuity, a call for growth, and a call for clarity, um, a call for clarity. Um, there are uh, quarterly membership um, donation, um, the entry, there is a free level of entry for those that want to join. There is a $25 level of um, basic network association or affiliation with the network for basic things that you'll get month to month. Um, and then there is the $50 level of those, and that's quarterly, um, of those that are saying, hey, Apostle is my spiritual parent. He's my spiritual father. He's a spiritual, he's a pastor for me. He's covering me. Um, and I take every person that I cover to the Lord in prayer. There's not a, a day that goes by that I forget to call out names. And I know they're on here, but Caleb Dominion and Alonda, when I, when I forget to call and there's other people that are underneath me, but those are the core team leaders that you'll see those three, um, that are helping me to run this network but if you don't see me call you you don't see my name come up on your phone trust i have called you in the spirit realm i've called you in that closet in prayer i'll call your name out before the lord and um i'm gonna tell you that's what matters not people calling you all the time but trust me <laughs> it's almost like God you got to trust him when you can't trace him and when you can't trace me no I'm somewhere in prayer or I'm somewhere working on something um, to better God I feel like Frank Bowman right here <laughs> I feel like my father but to better the body of Christ um, some huge things are about to happen for us let's just put it like that I put it like that some huge things are about to happen for us and you cannot be asleep when the Lord is calling you especially into destiny 
I was able to experience something so awesome on last night um, as we were consecrating on our way to go be consecrated in the presence of the Lord for a meeting in Texarkana, Texas. And I hope I'm saying that right. Um, Texarkana, Texas, especially off of Richmond Road. And I have the pictures to prove it. I may post them on Facebook. Um, I lived for a portion. I had to be rescued um, because I moved to Houston, Texas and thought it was God and then found out that it wasn't and then found out that it was <laughs> um, in the Houston Hobby Airport someone was supposed to come and get me and my God brother and I was supposed to start my job this was 2010 uh, the same year my father passed and I moved to Houston on that plane got off the plane at around 6.30 ride was supposed to be there about 7 and found out at about 1.26 in the morning that my ride wasn't coming that they had never left they weren't going to help me get my job um, I had an interview the next day uh, I think in Humble, Texas, for the iPhone store. They never left. They said they weren't coming. And God bless you. So I was left there in the Houston Hobby Airport for the next 26 hours, not knowing what I was going to do, where I was going to go. Because everything that I had set up to live, I had sent money and I had sent clothes and I had sent belongings to a certain place in uh, Temple, Texas, and come to find out that my ride didn't leave and they weren't coming, so I wasn't going to be able to go. So I ended up being homeless in that Houston Hobby Airport, me and my godbrother, for the next 26 hours with no answer, not knowing what we were going to do. And I stayed in that chapel, and I just remember going over Psalm 91 and there was a little Indian man that would come in there and he'd lay out his mat and pray and then I'd come behind him and I'd lay in the same place and pray every time and I think it made him sick <laughs> but I'm like you ain't gonna you know you're not gonna use God's consecrated place to pray to your God and I'm sitting in here and I'm not gonna pray devil done lost his ever loving mind I'm finna make this my threshing floor and I prayed and my dad sent money and we experienced, um, he sent money. We went to a hotel um, by way of someone we did not know. It was a Mexican named, um, what was his name? G uh, Ishmael. And Ishmael listened to our problems long enough. He was smoking a cigarette and he said, I'll take you to your hotel and I'll take you to Walmart to get your money and get you guys something to eat because I work at the hotel and I'm staying here sometime. And he listened to our problems long enough. And then after we told him what was going on, he put his cigarette out. He turned off the radio. He stopped cussing on the phone, put his phone down and began to prophesy. Me and my God brothers face off. And he said, God sends soldiers to the desert. And that's why he sent you. My name is Ishmael. And it means messenger of God. And I never see you. If I never see you guys again, I want you to know that God sent you here to break you. And I'm like, sir. You just finished putting out a cigarette and da 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 da, -da. <laughs> But when I tell you, he had us in the backseat of the car. <laughs> I mean, just <laughs> in the backseat, just going off, praising God. So we went to Whataburger. I'm from Baltimore, so I didn't know what Whataburger was. And we went to Whataburger. And I'm like, this food is good, but I could have made better at my house but any man 
Um, <laughs> so <laughs> no, uh, no shade, no tea, no shade. But got the water burger and went to Walmart and got the stuff. Went back to the hotel, and I remember this because the Australian Open was on, and I love tennis. And the Australian Open was on. I was watching, you know, Serena play or whatever. And I said, well, I'm going to eat this. And we watched tennis, and then we just laid down. And when I got back up, I said, oh, man, we forgot to get, you know, to call that guy. He gave us his his number. And he was a actually functioning as a, you know, the people to come and get the cars and stuff. Um, you know, they come like a bounty hunter almost. And we... Um, you know, pray that God would keep him safe. And he had his little truck over on the side that had cars on it. And we said, okay, well, we need to call him. We need to call him because we need to go somewhere else. We needed to go to McDonald's. This is so a true story. I really wish Psych Nurse was on here so he could tell you the reality of this. Because I think we walked the next... Mm, from where our hotel was because we couldn't find it. We called him and earlier the number had, you know, was left like an answer machine. You know, please leave a message at the sound of a beep. When we called that number back, it kept going do, do, do. The number you reached. So I'm like, so we went over to, you know, the other side and asked about, you know, his car and the other car truck was gone. I'm like, I don't remember him leaving. Went to the front desk. Ask them, did they, you know, do you know a guy named Ishmael? No record of knowing who Ishmael was. They're like, who's Ishmael? We like, come on now. Ishmael picked us up from the airport. Ishmael took me to go get Whataburger. Ishmael took us to Walmart so I could get the $400 that I needed so that we could get uh, somewhere safe. And they like, we don't know who you're talking about. We don't know who Ishmael was. We said, oh, my goodness. <laughs> we just got picked up and prophesied to by an angel in disguise. That's why you never know who you're going to. I don't know who Ishmael was, but they didn't know who he was after we asked. And I'm like, well, he worked here. Come on. I mean, he helped you guys out there like. Who's Ishmael? We like, you got to be smoking crack. You remember who Ishmael? I mean, come on. The big guy that picked us up, he had all the cars on the back of his truck. They's like, we do not know who y'all are talking about. And if you keep talking, we're going to call the cops. You know, because who's this Ishmael? So he's like, really? Really? This is not happening. This cannot be happening. So we walked from that I think they call it Best Value Inn or something. Yes. Yes. Um, God sent soldiers. See, if Dominion... Uh, you see, Dominion, if he was on here, he'd um, be getting on me talking about, you know, when you finish this dictionary, you write your autobiography because there's too much stuff that happened to you that's going to encourage people that you really need to talk about. Um I, I really wish I could make these stories up. If psych nurse was on here, Orlando was on here, they could tell you, because I walked through a lot of this with them. You know, Sharon, the same. I mean, good God. Um, <sighs> some of this craziness I walked through, if it had not been for the Lord, and I'm getting there, I'm getting to the Texarkana testimony, because it's a whole part of it. So we had to walk from the little best value in there, uh, down maybe six blocks, and that's like six Texas blocks <laughs> uh, to a McDonald's. Um, and that was the first time that I got ran off the road by a truck. This big black pickup full of uh, Hispanic guys ran me and my friend off the road. Walk, we was walking on, you know, by the sidewalk and da 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 da. And there's not many, many sidewalks in the country or out off the expressway. So just see two black guys walking down the expressway on that little side. There's no sidewalk. You're walking down the expressway up onto the ramp <laughs> on the highway, walking, trying to get to a McDonald's and stood in the line at McDonald's and st stood in line at McDonald's to get some uh, chicken nuggets 
and uh, two sweet teas off the dollar menu and then walked them six blocks. I can't even call it six blocks. It had to have been at least um, a good mile and a half walk straight. Um, Those in Memphis, you know, it's like walking from East Memphis clear into Cordova, so to speak. It was a nice little walk. (laughs) You're going to be walking for a good two, three hours. So, but we were so hungry. And I'm like, that's the only place to got a dollar menu besides Wendy's. And Wendy's is farther. And we ain't doing all that. So we got there and got back. And I forget his name now. And he's going to hurt me that I forgot his name. But um, this guy and his parents who worked at a church who knew we was in Texas sent for us. Because they lived in Texarkana. And they said, we can't allow you guys to go through this. So how about this? How about we come get you and you label over in Texarkana and decide what your next move is going to be. And when we got to Texarkana, we didn't stay with them long. We ended up moving in with a friend of him, his. uh, And this girl, she was in Indian, like Native American. And she lived in a trailer park in Texarkana, which is, I think, right around where Richmond Road is, where there's a Walmart and there's a CeCe's Pizza. And, you know, I hate to say that, but people were flying their Confederate flags and their double barrel rifle shotguns uh, on their riding lawnmowers. And I had a picture. There were some cows there. And I had a picture of this longhorn cow that I sent to my parents to let them know, hey, I'm really in Texas and I'm really in a trailer park. God's going to get us because God hates trailer parks and I'm black in a trailer park. He's about to send a tornado right now. I'm really in rebellion. (laughs) That's just how I felt. And um, lived with this girl and her grandmother and her grandmother's cats in a trailer for a good two weeks in Texarkana and I survived walking from their house to Walmart and then walking from the Walmart to CC's pizza. And that was my dinner. That was my dinner. And then we left there, went to Temple, Texas, ministered to people in the Chick-fil-A And then, I mean, ministered to the cash registers and stuff. I mean, we ministered to the people at the counter at Chick-fil-A prophetically, like prophetic evangelism. And when we sat down, they all came over on their break that night. And we were just ministering to the people in Chick-fil-A. And then we left out of Chick-fil-A and was ministering to people in the drive-thru. Ministering to people in the parking lot in the drive-thru. I sent people to the desert. I believe God specifically sends prophets to the desert, but sometimes God sends you to the desert so that he can do a new thing. He said, yea, behold, I do a new thing. Shall you not know it? I'll send flowers in the wilderness and streams in the desert. Shall you not know it? You don't know he's doing a new thing inside of a new thing. God's got to do a new thing inside of the old thing. God's got to do a new thing inside of the place. That there's no grass, there's no roots, there's no nothing. So that when he does it, you know it's God. Oh, this was God. He sent you to the desert to train you. He sent you to the desert. It was Texas was a darkroom experience for me. I mean, later on, we would be uh, hoodwinked by a false bishop that was trying to make me a bishop that stole our rent money and was molesting his children and lying to people saying that he had cancer and all the above and stealing people's money. And God sent a mighty testimony out of that. My first uh, experience getting someone healed from uh, blood, you know, blood clots forming in their body came after, hey, praise God, hello, came after um, that experience of being sent to the desert. So God has always used Texas as, you know, how super, while I'm wearing a Superman shirt, 
God always sends Superman into the phone booth. Um, good morning. Good morning. God always sends Superman into the phone booth. Well, that's what Texas is for me. It's a transform. Texas has always been a transformation chamber for me. Um, and I will be heading to Texarkana on tomorrow. We've already been consecrated in the presence of the Lord, but we're going to be even the more consecrated, uh, I believe, into his presence, into his wedding feast, um, into the celebration of life. I feel like I'm attending the Lamb's Supper of the Bride because it's just a full circle moment for me. God bringing me all this way to acknowledge the Hebraic roots of the faith and bring it all up to the doctrine of the kingdom that Jesus preached to this moment of being inside of, I'm, I'm having a one new man moment where Jew and Gentile cease to differ and they become one. I'm having one of those moments. But yeah, ministering to people. And I mean, we had people purging in the parking lot of Chick-fil-A. And I remember there was a guy coming past that had some kind of spirit on him and his girlfriend. And they came past us trying to sell lingerie. Why did they do that? And I was speaking in tongues at 90 miles per hour. I turned around and I said something to them. And he said, oh, wait, oh, no, man. Oh, I don't want that. Oh, ah, and ran off. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I was trying to, you know. Oh, there ain't no sleep on me. Right. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I just had to testify about that. Texarkana was a place, you know, I remember, you know, the, the I just remember some of these sites there and I was like, wow, I'm, I'm really in the desert. I see cactuses. I see different stuff. Palm trees and iguanas it was just different for me it was so different and uh, moved to sugar land and that's where i experienced the um yeah <laughs> that's where i experienced the brunt of the warfare um of all the stuff you know the walking the getting spat on the trying to kill myself um in the bathroom the one day, did not want to come out. Um, getting prayed for, praying for people, and then someone having to bring me through deliverance because I prayed for too many people at that time, and I wasn't used to praying for people like that. Um, walking everywhere. God, I had so many. I had some shoes that I saved that had the hole in them. Had holes in the bottom of the shoe, big old hole. And I walked everywhere. Because God said, everywhere you walk until you get a car, you're going to gain territory in the spirit. And I walked those walks. I walked the prophetic out. You know, people want to just operate in, in it, but it 